All right. This is uh, Annie Ubelis with the Buford Tea Party. This would have been our normal monthly meeting, but I am having problems trying to get it broadcast over onto Facebook Live. I tried to do the Skype meeting, and that wasn't exactly working out either, so I apologize, but we're going to be doing this recording. I'm going to talk about the items I wanted to discuss at the meeting, and I hope I cover everything. And I get the information out there, which is the most important thing I want to do. Get the information out there so that you understand what we're working on, what we're looking at, and what we are doing. Uh, first and foremost, today is uh, Monday, August 17th. County Council is having their uh, emergency meeting. They had it about an, an hour ago at 5 o'clock, and then they're going into their regular session. We need people to contact County Council and tell them to not extend the face mask mandate. Um, it's questionable whether or not it was the regulation was passed legally. It should have had public comment and three readings before it went into effect, but they used the emergency clause. And emergency clauses usually is like 24 hours, 48 hours, maybe a week, not months upon months upon months. So again, we're questioning whether or not they have the legal power to pass this alleged emergency resolution without public comment and three readings. Uh, additionally, um, there are, uh, there is also the violation of the HIPAA and the Americans with Disability Act in the mandate of these masks and where you find yourself, and I have had this happen to me personally, denied access to medical and retail services. Uh, if you cannot wear a mask, as I have a difficulty doing it, I go into respiratory distress. I don't have to tell you that, but I'm just letting you know where I'm coming from. And um, it makes it, I can't breathe. I end up you know, coughing my lungs out as if I've got, you know, lung cancer or whatever. Uh, so I'm restricted in where I can go and what I can do because of this mask mandate. Any business, any location, be it medical or business, that denies you access is in direct violation of the HIPAA Act. Each and every Violation. So if I go to my doctor and three times they deny me, that's three separate violations, carries up to a quarter million dollar fine, as well as a possible penalty of 10 years, 10 federal years in prison. Violations of the Americans with Disability Act now denying me access to any establishment would be then in violation of the Americans with Disability Act, and that can ca carry up to 150 thousand dollar fine we are going to have to take our liberties back we have placed these laws in effect to help those of us that are disabled and they extend to you if for a medical reason you cannot wear a mask you cannot be denied services and we're going to have to start uniting on a front and make it known that this is now in violation of the federal law and our rights are being violated. If you want, you can contact me directly. You can do it through the Buford Tea Party website, or you can email me directly. The email access is again through the website, or contact me here on the Facebook page. And I have a four-page pamphlet. I will be happy to upload the PDF format for there for you, and you can print it out yourself. You can upload it onto your smart device, your iPhone, or whatever you have, and keep it in your pocket. And if someone starts to deny you access, pull the pamphlet up and put it in their face and say, if you are, in, you refuse me service, you are in violation of the HIPAA Act and the Americans with Disability Act, and I will then report your establishment, you will face fines and a possible prison penalty. Um, it's not because I don't think it's smart to wear a mask. You know, if you can, I would encourage you to do that. Um, I have altered some things I have done. I have a face shield now. It's not the best. It offers me some protection. It allows me to breathe easier. Some establishments may accept it, some may not. Again, HIPAA, American with Disabilities. Start pulling that trump card out on them, and let's start getting our freedoms back. Uh, again, if you have any questions to anything I'm saying, post it with this video, and I will respond to you. Um, I'm looking at all the things I wanted to talk about. Um, 
And there is a push by a couple of individuals to have uh, mail-in balloting. They also want to change the rules for absentee balloting. At this point in time, the state of South Carolina requires two signatures, two witnesses to your signature. And they're saying it imposes an odious burden upon them to obtain these two signatures because of the COVID, COVID ep epidemic or pandemic, whatever you want to call it, hoax. Folks, if you can go out shopping in Walmart, if you can go now to the barber or the beauty parlor or to a restaurant and sit down and eat, you can vote in person. You can early vote in person. You can absentee vote in person. You can go to the polling place on the day of election and vote in person. And you will be safer than if you're in that restaurant, in that barber or beauty parlor or in Wally World shopping. When you go, and I voted in the primary, and I personally observed how they're handling the polling places. When you get to the polling place, they ask you to put the mask on. Okay, for the few minutes I go in to vote, I'll do that, which I did. As soon as you get in, they have hand sanitizer. You sign in, you're going to use the hand sanitizer, a sanitary pen. They wipe the pens down. You go over to the voting um, machines. Before you get there, they wipe the machines down. They sanitize it because there's one machine you're going to uh, place your, your choice on your ballot. It's going to give you a little printout. You take that to a second machine and they wipe the machine down before you use it. It's cleaned every single time someone uses it. You then uh, feed this paper ballot after you check to make sure it's your vote on there. It's not something else that, that you chose. So check that paper ballot. Now you feed this ballot into the second machine. Your vote is recorded electronically because it scans it and registers your vote. And they have a backup paper ballot to verify that the tally on the machine equals those paper ballots. By federal law, and this was proven and upheld by the Supreme Court in Bush v. Gore in 2000, there is something called the safe harbor. Within 35 days of the general election, your vote must be certified. On day 36, your vote no longer counts. So unless your vote is, is certified by day 35 and counted, it no longer means anything. If you vote in person by going directly up to the machine in, uh, uh, oh geez, uh, on John Gold, 15 John Gold here in Buford, um, the, Oh, I might just had a major brain fart. Uh, the central area where the, the commissioner of voting and everything has all of their offices. You can go over there to 15 John Gold over by Lowe's off of Robert Small Parkway and early vote or absentee vote. And they will take you to the actual machines and you will place your vote into the machine. If you vote by mail, be it absentee voting or mail-in voting, your vote may or may not get counted. In many circumstances, absentee ballots and mail-in ballots do not get counted unless it's a close election. Now, I foresee a landslide. I foresee, I'm, I'm predicting a landslide for Republicans and for Trump. So those absentee ballots, those mail-in ballots may not even get considered for count. So unless it's certified within 35 days as upheld by the Supreme Court in Bush v. Gore, it's not going to matter. Now, I have noticed and I observed over the years that people more likely to vote in person are people like you and me, conservatives, republics, independents, people who will mail in absentee ballots or mail-in ballots will be those on the left, those that vote Democrat, those that vote Socialist, those that vote Green Party. They're more likely to mail in their vote. So it's more important that we, those on the right, get to the polling places on election day or to the uh, Board of Elections, that's, that's the, uh, or to the Board of Elections over at 15 John Gold and vote in person and make sure you do it on the machine. You don't fill out a paper ballot and hand it to someone and walk away. 
vote at the actual voting machine. And make sure your ballot is correct before you read it, you feed it into the scanner. Um, just bear with me on this one. I have no idea. So I apologize. Whoever has, that is, they're going to have to leave a message. Um, anyway, um, that's important. Also, uh, write to your state representative and to your state senator and tell them you do not want an altered absentee voting. You want to make sure that absentee voting, and if they do the mail-in voting, requires two signatures verifying that you are the one filling out that ballot. And that is South Carolina state law. They want to say because of this pandemic, let's suspend that temporarily for the general election. BS. BS. If you can go to the grocery store and stand in less than six feet between you and the cashier, and I'm telling you, you're three feet away from the cashier as you're giving them the, your credit card or your cash or your, they're bagging your groceries, you're less than three feet away. If you can go to the grocery store, if you can go to Wally World, and deal with the public and the cashiers and the staff in those establishments, then you can go and get two signatures on your absentee ballot or mail-in ballot. And all you need is a six foot distance and a desk or some sort of a counter between you and the persons that are signing your ballot to verify you are who you are. If you can do that, if you can go to the grocery store, you can get two individuals to stand a safe distance. You put the ballot on the counter, the desk, the chair, someone's back. I don't care. But you can still get two signatures safely. So it, it's BS. It's a way for the left to try to steal the election because they know they have no hope going against Trump. So it's important. Let's stick by fair voting. So make sure you get a email out or a postcard out or a phone call to your state representative and your state senator and tell them, no, do not change the rules in the middle of the game. We can go to the polls. If anything you want to do, senator, if anything you want to do, representative, make sure our poll workers are properly trained on the COVID uh, recommendations from CDC. Wearing the mask, staying a safe distance, using the hand sanitizer and having the poll workers know how to handle this, properly wear them and make sure the machines are cleaned after each and every voter. So what it slows you down five or 10 minutes, it's no big deal to be safe. Let's get in-person voting and let's get these polls staffed. We also need poll watchers. Contact uh, Buford County GOP. They're looking to train poll watchers to make sure this is all done properly. As long as you also you know, practice safe CDC recommended COVID procedures, wearing a mask, using hand sanitizers, and not touching any surface unless it has been cleaned, you're going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. Come November 4th, we're going to wake up, the sun is going to be shining, and Donald Trump will still be president. So don't let them scare you. Don't let them fool you. All right. Um, there is... Um, a young lady here in Beaufort County, Lori Zapp, God bless her, and I hope she, she watches this video too, as I mentioned her. Um, she has been checking the voter rolls, and in her area in Bluffton, she found a whole slew. I think she said something like 500. Lori, if I'm correct, right or wrong, I'm just trying to remember what your email said to me when you sent it to me. Approximately 500 dead voters still on the rolls. So if they decide to try to do mail-in balloting, that's 500 more voters that could be stolen. That could be chance of voter fraud. If it goes to homes where the people had lived, someone else fills out that ballot and mails it in, and they're voting like a Democrat as many times as they can. Let's not let it happen. Um, I would suggest if you're interested in helping to try to clean up the voter rolls, uh, get a hold of Lori Zapp. She's with a group here on Facebook called Engage the Right. Um, also get a hold of Kevin Henley with the Beaufort County GOP and ask what you could do to help to look at the voter rolls and see, you know, do we have dead people on here? Do we have people that moved and no longer live in Beaufort County, much less in the state of South Carolina? Let's see what we can do to help them make this uh, election more fair. Um, 
So she's been doing that, and I, I want to thank her for doing that. There's also another organization, and I meant to pull this up before I came in to start doing the uh, the broadcast here. It's called 10, the word for, F-O-R, 20. 10 for 20, uh, and I'm pulling up that website right now. Um, 10 for 20, I'm looking for that one. Uh, just bear with me. It is a organization that is looking to help people get to the polls on election day, offering them rides to the poll. Um, uh, let's put down here, see if I can get this over here, 2020 elections. Bear with me as I try to pull up this website because I heard about it um, as I was driving home for my physical therapy. And let me pull this up. It's up on Breitbart. See if I can find a 10 for 20 campaign. Let me pull up the website. All right, it is the number 10, the word for, F-O-R, 20.com. Now, I'm going to check them out and see exactly what they are doing uh, and how maybe we as the Buford Tea Party can get involved and... Um, Get people to the polls. If you, they cannot get out of the house, if they don't have a ride. So I'm making a notation for this. And I'm also going to send um, an email out outlining some of the things I just uh, spoke about. I'll also have it up on the Facebook page underneath this video uh, with the link for the 10 for 20com to see what we can do to help get people to the polls, especially, you know, those that are elderly, those that are ill, uh, whatever. See what we can do to help there. Um, okay, moving on a little bit, um, the Sea Island Coalition has been sent out a petition dealing with the development here at Whitehall. For those that are not familiar with Whitehall, it is, it used to be a restaurant at the foot of the Woods Bridge coming from the city of, uh, Buford onto Ladies Island. The restaurant is now closed long ago. And the property has been vacant and several developers have been trying to develop it. And they've come up with, you know, density plans that are higher than, that is favorable for the traffic in this area. And anyone that comes across that Woods Bridge uh, knows how, how the traffic flows. And if you get any backup, say for example, uh, Buford High lets out, traffic will back up over the bridge. Uh, if you have a beautiful sunny Saturday or Sunday and people are pulling into that boat landing directly across uh, from the uh, Meridian Road where Whitehall development is going to be going into knows how traffic backs up when some of these boats pull onto that landing on or off that landing. Uh, so we know it there is a traffic problem already at the foot of the Woods Bridge on Ladies Island where Whitehall development will be going in. So they are ringing the alarm bell about the traffic nightmare that will unfold once that development starts and then becomes occupied. And we've got to stand shoulder to shoulder with them uh, and have a smart plan placed in at Whitehall Development. We have to have a smart traffic plan placed into development there. And if it goes at the, de the density the developer wants at this point in time, the Woods Drawbridge would have to be torn down and a whole new span bridge would go from Ladies Island over into the city of Buford, which means that that bridge is going to be far larger, far longer than the current bridge, which means roads are going to be torn up and for as, however long it takes for them to rebuild that bridge, put in a new bridge, it's going to be an absolute traffic nightmare. In order to get safely to downtown, you're going to have to go the long way around through Port Royal over the McTeer Bridge to come back into downtown Buford. It's going to be a nightmare. And if that's not done, the, tended, the, the, the potential for a fatal accident coming off of Meridian onto 21 or coming out of that boat landing onto 21 or crossing from the boat landing over 21 onto Meridian. The potential for a fatal accident is very real. 
So I would like to lock shoulders with the Sea Island Coalition and do whatever is necessary to protect the safety of the motorists, of pedestrians, of every single person that's going to cross through that area. Uh, this is something that we are going to be keeping a really big eye on. And the last thing, I'm going to keep this video going too long. I want to make it as short and sweet as possible. The last thing I want to uh, discuss, and I'm sure there's more things I can be talking to you about, but I haven't. Unfortunately, I wish I had the interaction of you t sitting down with me face to face, like when we do our normal meetings. I love the feedback I get from you. Um, it, it gives us great ideas, great exchange of information, and I miss that. Uh, I'm looking to September do a live in-person meeting once again at uh, uh, Fuji's restaurant here on Ladies Island. I'm going to be talking to Cuts about starting that back up again. I think it, it, this is enough is enough. Uh, we, we, we are able to go out to restaurants to eat. If we're able to do that, if we're able to shop at Wally World, then we should be able to hold our meetings once again. And I'm looking for, I believe it's September 17th, I believe is a Monday. Let me just double check the calendar. Yeah, it would be Monday, September 17th. I'm looking again to try to get Nancy Mace. I mean, this, this, it's crazy. And, and I, I'm going to speak to her girl, her scheduler, a little bit later on and see if we can make that happen. Um, but the last thing I do want to discuss with you is this Saturday, August 22nd, starting at 10 a.m., we are having Back the Blue and First Responders Rally. With everything that's going on, with Antifa, with Black Lives Matter, with these anarchists, um, we've got to show support for the men and women that serve as our first responders and law enforcement. So we will be gathering at 10 a.m. over at the old Piggly Wiggly parking lot at the intersection of Rebolt Road and Boundary Street, uh, where Sergeant White's restaurant is in there. It used to be the Piggly Weekly grocery store directly across the street from the city of Buford Police Department. Um, and we're going to have people come in with, uh, bring American flags, bring patriotic t-shirts, bring some really, really clever handmade, homemade signs. Uh, we're going to be gathering on the sidewalk. We're not going to impede pedestrian or vehicle traffic. This is, even though I'm, here I am, Buford Tea Party, this is a non-political rally. The only thing that we are doing is showing support for our police and first responders. So we're going to have people that get over because behind the Piggly Wiggly, Wiggly is a fire station. Across the street behind the uh, county offices is the sheriff's department. We're encouraging people to go out in front to rally in front of these buildings as well as along the sidewalks at the intersection. Wave your flags, wave your signs. Let's cheer on the police, the firefighters, the emergency services. Let's, let's show them our love and how much the community appreciates the hard work they do. Um, they are already aware that we are doing this uh, and Mr. Gray has allowed us to use the parking lot at the old Piggly Wiggly so we can gather there. We're going to have a little bit of a opening ceremony, you know, with Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and we'll, we'll just start the rally there. It's nothing that's going to take any more than five or ten minutes max talk. And then everyone move out onto the sidewalks in front of these buildings. And let's give a really, really strong red, white, and blue rally. You know, these men and women... There are our parents, there are our spouses, there are our brothers, our sisters, there are our children who don these uniforms. They volunteer to protect and serve. They don't have to do this job. They really don't. They can probably earn more money as a welder or a plumber than they do as a, as a first responder. Let's show them how much this community appreciates, appreciates the hard work. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your relatives, and bring them with you. Come out for this rally. It, it's some, I, I got interviewed by the Gazette earlier today asking about that, and it really drove me nuts. He goes, but you're Buford Tea Party. I said, yes, but this is a non-political. We're just getting everyone from all areas of our community to come forward and show their support for our first responders and our law enforcement. Again, it's not political. And he kept on saying to me, but you're for a tea party. I said, yes, but I'm not in this alone. Now, I, I, I don't know if I'm doing this correctly, but I thought 
Shannon Erickson put the buzz in someone's ear, and it sort of just trickled down. So a bunch of us met for lunch earlier this week. Um, the ball had been rolling. We were making phone calls and emails cross over. So I'm not the only one behind this. There is a whole group of us. Some want their names and faces known. Others don't. So I'm not going to violate their privacy. They'll be at the rally, and I'm not going to point them out because they really would like to stay in the background. But they had asked Lori Zapp and myself to be the opening face. And I said, sure, fine. I'm already out there. <laughs> I'm not shy. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> anyway, um, but that's what we're going to be doing. I ask you to show up uh, on this coming Saturday, August 22nd. Uh, bring a creative sign, you know. Uh, I, I don't know. Think of crazy things to say. Yeah. I support the blue or um, the the blue the same as you. Uh, I don't know. Think, think of something clever, you know. Uh, as you can see behind me, I've got my <laughs> Cops for Trump <laughs> poster, but I'm not going to bring that because then again, that's political. So try to avoid stuff like that. Um, it, fine, if you want to wear your Trump t-shirt or hat, that's no big deal. It's just showing, you know, what you personally feel. But as for the rally overall, I'm not going to tell you to take it off. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to cheer you and pat you on the back and say thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, but the overall message of the rally is just the support for our law enforcement and our first responders. Uh, that's all I basically have to say. And I apologize for not getting up the Skype as I wanted to. Um, I had tried, I ran a test on it last night and everything worked fine. But when I hooked it up with the Skype, I kept on getting a lot of feedback. It just wasn't working. And I went up onto the Facebook and I couldn't tell if anyone could hear me. Uh, so I cut it off. I tried a few times and I just wasn't satisfied. So I'm putting this video message together for you. And I hope to see you on Saturday. Again, I'm just a email message away or I'm in the phone book. If you need to call <laughs> and talk to me, I'll be happy to speak with you. Again, this is Ann Ubellis uh, signing off. And have faith. Come November 4th, as I said, the sun is going to be shining and we're going to have four more years of Trump. So <laughs> have faith. Until then, I will say good night and God bless.